Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install a Minecraft server on Open Media Vault 5 using Docker and Portainer. Now, there are a few different ways that you can go about doing this, whether it's through a Docker command or using uh, the Portainer GUI, where you're gonna go ahead and fill in all of the individual blocks, or you can actually run a stack. And that's what we're gonna do in this video, is we're gonna do a stack setup for this. But over on my website, I will have instructions for just running a Docker command if you wanna go that route instead. Um, but in this video, I will showed how to, how to do everything through stacks. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch camera angles, jump over to my desktop and get a, a Minecraft server installed on Open Media Vault 5, again, using Docker and Portainer. Okay guys, so here we are on my desktop. And of course this is the Minecraft website. And while that's all fine and well, the problem is this doesn't help us. So we're gonna go ahead and close this. Now, this is the Minecraft server that the folks over at ITZG have put together. On here, you can see that there are, uh, there's a basic command right here at the very top that you can run. That will do the trick. That's all you have to do uh, for the bare minimum to get a Minecraft server up and running. Now, beyond that, if you scroll down a little bit, there are some additional um, things that you can add to it as far as variables for what version you wanna run, um, or uh, do you want to run a Forge server, things like that. There's a lot of additional information down here that's good to go through. Um, but more than that, if you click this link right here, it's gonna take you over to their GitHub page. Uh, a lot of this is gonna be the same, um, but there's some good stuff in here uh, for additional, um, additional things that you can do to configure your server the way you want it. And you've got to scroll down just a little bit to get there, but um, it, things like adding a, a, a running a bucket slash a spigot server, um, building an image with plugins, uh, that's all kind of the same thing there. Um, so there's a lot of additional stuff here if you want to run a sponge vanilla, fabric servers, um, if you want to cut around a custom version of jar or a server, a custom server jar rather, um, let's see what else server configuration, server ports, server names. These are all things that you can change the difficulty, uh, whitelisting players. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff to go through here and I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, but just know that it's there if you want to know how to allow Nether or uh, announce player achievements or things like that. Those are all additional variables that you can add to your uh, server setup. Um, know that all of these links will be in the description. That That's kind of a given. All of this will be in the description so you can do more research as far as additional things for the environmental variables that you'd like to add. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go over to Open Media Vault and uh, actually create a shared folder for Minecraft. Now you could probably just run this in your config folder, but uh, I like to create an additional folder just for Minecraft here. So we're gonna name it Minecraft. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on our drive and we're gonna make sure that everybody has read and write privileges and we'll click save. Uh, then we're gonna come down over here to SMB CIFS. We're gonna go to shares up here and then we're going to add a share. So we're gonna go ahead and select Minecraft there, make sure the public is only guests and click save. And then we'll go ahead and click apply and yes. Okay, so now that we have our share set up, what we'll wanna do is come back over here to shared folders. And we're gonna to wanna to make note of this line right here for the absolute path of the Minecraft folder we've set up. Now, if you don't see uh, this absolute path, you can come across this header up here. Any of these will work. Just click the drop down arrow, go to columns and toggle absolute path on just so you make sure that you've got uh, this right here that's gonna have the absolute path. Now, that's all we need to do in uh, Open Media Vault itself. Next, we're gonna go over here to Portainer and uh, of course, when you get to Portainer, you're going to see something like this. Of course, you'll open this up and then you'll go into stacks. We're gonna do this one in stacks. Um, originally, this doesn't have, it, it sort of has uh, something for a stack, but it's not great. Um, this is a version three, uh, and this only works if you're running your server in swarm mode. Uh, we're not gonna do that, so. Um, so I wrote up my own stack that I've tested a couple of times and it works. So we're gonna go ahead and name it Minecraft, as you would. And then I've got this over here on a different screen. We're gonna copy and paste that in. So here is our stack and I'm gonna run through this real quick. Uh, up here, we've got version two, that's pretty standard. Services is going to be Minecraft server. Under that is the image. Uh, this is, we're gonna pull this 
uh, from hub.docker.com, uh, specifically from uh, this area right here. Uh, below that, the container name is going to be Minecraft. Uh, network mode is going to be host. That's going to give it your server an actual IP address from your router. Uh, below that, we've got some environmental variables. Now, the first one is a user ID and the second one is a group ID. Uh, if you don't know what these are, uh, we'll go ahead and open PuTTY. And uh, we'll bring this up here and we'll type in our server address. And of course, your server address will be different than mine. So make sure you type in your server address and go ahead and click open. And then we'll log in as root. Like so. OK, now, in order to get the user ID and the group ID, we need to know those for the admin account or for the, the, the account you're using on Portainer. Now, mine is called admin. Uh, yours may be your name, yours may be any number of things, but mine is admin. So I'm gonna type an ID, oops, admin. And here you can see my user ID is 998 and my group ID is 100. Now yours may be uh, 1000 for both of these, or maybe something entirely different, but mine is 998 and 100. So I've gone ahead and put that in there. Now below that, the version is snapshot. That always pulls, or that's always the newest version. I like the newest version. You may not want that. You can change this to whatever version of Minecraft you'd like to run here. Um, but I've got mine set to snapshot. Yours could be, I think, 1.15 or 1.17. Uh, you can put whatever you'd like in there. Below that is memory. Now this is how much RAM it's going to allocate to your server. The default number here is one. Uh, one is fine, I wanted to try two, so I put two in there. Uh, make sure that you don't go over what your system will allow you to use and run the server smoothly. Um, I'm on, uh, this is actually being set up on a Latte Panda. It's got four gigs of RAM, um, so two gigs dedicated to this should be fine since I'm not really doing much else with the server at this point. Now, uh, below that, uh, this is, um, this is exactly what it says it is. Do we want to announce player achievements? Um, if if you've got this turn, if, if this line isn't there, it will be false by default, but I wanted that to be true. So I turned that on uh, by adding true to the end of that. Um, and again, this, this environments area, that's where you would add um, uh, allow nether or max world size or max players. Um, each one of those that you would want to add would be an additional line down below here. Um, so that's where the uh, these different variables would go for uh, a lot of the different uh, options you've got there. Oops. So below that, we've got ports. Uh, 25565 is the standard port for Minecraft. I don't know of any other service that uses that. Uh, so you can you should be able to leave this as it is. Uh, volumes, this is that absolute path that we created back over here in Open Media Vault. You can see that uh, right here, this SRV, dev disk by label files and Minecraft. Uh, that's exactly what we've got right in here. Um, so you'll wanna make sure that you change that to be uh, good for your server to make sure that those line up with your server settings. And then restart unless stopped, pretty standard stuff there. So that's all we need to do in order to uh, to get a, a Minecraft server set up in stacks. So we'll come down here and we'll click on deploy the stack. This should deploy in about 45 seconds uh, based on the testing I've done. Of course, it will be faster or slower uh, depending on your uh, particular configuration, your hardware, uh, the way your server is set up, that sort of stuff. Uh, mine, I, I'm pretty familiar with mine. This should take about 45 seconds. Okay, so now we've got that uh, up and running. So the next thing we'll do, we'll go over here to containers. Uh, here we can see that this Minecraft container is starting and we can actually watch it start up by clicking the logs right here. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. Um, you can see that it's put in, uh, like our, our memory was set to two. So that's good, that was done, that did what, exactly what we told it to. Uh, you can see that it's starting the different uh, tasks that it's gonna go through here. Uh, this will take a little bit of time. Uh, as it goes through and it creates the world and it goes through, uh, like I said, preparing the spawn area, things like that. Um, and of course, this is a, a four core processor. Um, I, I've also got this running on an eight core processor on a different server, and it's much faster on there than it is on here. 
Um, so just know that uh, your hardware will be the determining factor on how fast this actually deploys. So we'll go ahead and give this just a second to load, and then we'll jump into the Minecraft application, and I'll show you some settings that you may have to change in order to get it to talk to your server correctly. Okay, so this is all done now. So that's good. That means it's all set up and ready to go. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to find my Minecraft application and I'll go ahead and drag it up here. Now, the first thing you may have to do is come over here to installations um, and then uh, turn on snapshots. Um, before I did this, before I turned on snapshots here, it kept telling me there was an error and it needed this version, this 20W09A, uh, it needed that in order to communicate with my server. Um, as soon as I did that, uh, everything started working. So if if you run into that situation, just know that you may have to turn on snapshots and launch the latest snapshot there. Now that is, of course, because I told it to use snapshots in my server configuration. So. Uh, if you went with version 115, uh, you shouldn't have to do that. So let's go ahead and click on play. And uh, we'll go ahead and let this pop up in just a second here. Sorry, I've got, I was playing this on a much larger server or much larger uh, screen earlier. And uh, so I'm gonna have to shrink this down just a little bit here. And I kind of want it to be over here in the corner so we can see some stuff going on uh, down here on the server. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on multiplayer and then we can actually click on add a server. Um, I'm gonna click in here. I'm gonna name the server just so I know that it's on my Latte Panda like so. And I'll type in my server address, 38, and I'll click done. So there it is, it found it immediately. Here we can see that there are zero of 20 players and that our ping time is two milliseconds. Um, and this is this is a different server that I've got running. That's an eight core server with 16 gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, this is four gigs of RAM with a, uh, an Intel Celeron processor. Uh, so much, much lower powered. Um, so uh, here it is running. So if I go ahead and I click on play, um, it's joining the world here. There we go. And you can actually see uh, right over here that it showed that I joined the game uh, and everything there is good to go. So we'll go ahead and go back to game. Um, and everything here is actually running pretty smoothly. Um, so let's see if I can find anything. All right, so we've got our recipes that are loading up. I unlocked, unlocked a bunch of recipes by killing the cow. Uh, everything here appears to be working uh, just fine. Uh, so we should at that point be good to go. Okay guys, so there you go. There's how easy it can be to set up a Minecraft server on Open Media Vault 5 using Docker and Portainer, uh, using the stack that I came up with. Again, the original uh, in bit of information didn't have a version two stack, so I wrote one up, and I hope it's super helpful to get you guys up and running if that's the method you wanna go with. If it is, uh, let me know in the comment section down below which method you used. I'd really like to know which method you guys prefer uh, when it comes to deploying uh, instances on your server. Do you prefer stacks? Do you prefer uh, Docker commands, what, what kind of uh, method do you like to use in order to get things deployed on your server? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you're interested in this kind of content where I show how to uh, deploy different server instances on Open Media Vault 5 using Docker and Portainer, don't forget to get subscribed because that's a lot of what my content has been focused around recently. I'm sure that's gonna go on for a while longer anyway. So if you're interested in this kind of content with deploying server instances, definitely get subscribed for more of this kind of content content. But I think, uh, I th really think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Very simple process getting uh, a Minecraft server set up and running in just a couple of minutes. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.